five painting mistakes artists make. Hey everybody, I'm Ken Brandt and I'm an artist. So I'd like to mention a few mistakes that artists make when they're painting on a painting and it doesn't matter what medium you're working in whether it's oils, acrylics, watercolor, um, these are these are mistakes that are made uh, across the board and not just beginners either. Uh, I've noticed um, even uh, intermediate and advanced artists um, also make these same type of mistakes. These aren't in any particular order. I'm just going to go ahead and mention the first one is the drawing. Uh, getting your drawing correct, whether it be on the canvas, whether you are drawing uh, with your paint onto the canvas, you know, you could use pencil, charcoal, whatever, but you have to get that drawing correct. And there are those that will argue the point, and they'll say, you do not have to know how to draw to know how to paint. And I am going to disagree with that. I believe that you need to know how to draw. When you are painting, whether you whether you drew with pencil onto the canvas or not, if you're just going directly onto the canvas with paint, you're still drawing. So you still have to know how to draw. Now when I say know how to draw, I'm talking about you need to have an idea on perspective. You need to be able to uh, properly judge distance between objects, whatever it is that you're trying to portray in your painting. Because if you continue painting afterwards, what you have drawn onto there and you continue, pa continue painting on top of that, if the drawing isn't correct, your painting isn't going to be right. And you're going to see that and everybody else is going to see that. For example, when you do a portrait, if you do not draw the eyes or nose or mouth correctly, people will see that right away because your brain already knows how to interpret what an eye looks like, what a nose looks like, and it knows when something isn't right. And that goes with anything. If you're drawing an apple, if you do not draw the apple correctly and it doesn't look like an apple, you know, if it looks like an orange and you're trying to paint an apple, people are not going to see that apple. They're going to see an orange. So you got to make sure your drawing is correct. And I challenge you to find any artist that is a master painter and ask them if they if they know how to draw and I can guarantee you every single one of them knows how to draw there isn't a single person painter out there a master painter that is going to tell you they can't draw okay so getting that drawing correct initially onto the canvas is extremely important to even getting a good painting to begin with so that is usually mistake um, a mistake that uh, a lot of artists make. A, a, a second mistake that artists make when they're painting is getting their values correct. A lot of people don't get their values correct because I don't believe they understand what value is. Uh, basically all value is is the different shades of a color. So when you're looking when you're talking about the value of say the color gray we're talking about a darker gray as opposed to a lighter gray it could be the same color gray it could be Payne's gray and but the value of that Payne's gray could be different um, you can have a darker shade or a lighter shade and anywhere in between the value will vary and a lot of people don't understand exactly what it is you're talking about. They think maybe you're talking about a different color. So I think that's where a lot of people make the mistake. Putting in proper values into your painting will ensure that your, the viewer understands what it is they're looking at. Because a lot of times it's not the color of something that your mind interprets the object to be what it's supposed to be. For example, um, you paint a dog. If you paint the dog blue, if you use your values correctly, your brain will still interpret the image to be a dog. 
whether it's blue, purple, red, yellow, it doesn't matter. It still knows it's a dog because it, the values are correct and everything looks the way it's supposed to look. So it doesn't matter what colors you use in a painting. What does matter is what value you have when you're putting those colors down. So that's where you are going to um, start uh, applying what I call the third mistake a lot of painters make um, is putting interest into their painting. They don't put interest into their painting is what the mistake that they make and a lot of times that, that is because they are improperly using their values. So you don't have any interesting contrasts. You don't have any interesting effects of light. You don't have any um, interest in the objects that you're trying to paint within your painting. Whether it be a landscape or a still life, capturing the viewer's interest is key to um, having a great painting. I mean, if you are painting an apple, why would anybody be interested in looking at the painting of your apple as opposed to a painting of anybody else's apple? You have to put some interest within that painting to capture your viewer's uh, attention. So, yeah, uh, and value plays a big part in that. Um, contrast uh, between your darks and your lights, that plays a huge part in uh, applying interest. Your composition, so your composition plays a big part in that as well. Um, how things are laid out within your painting. And that goes all the way back to the very first thing I mentioned, which is getting the drawing correct. So a lot of that, this all ties together. Not any one thing is going to be um, independent of the other. They all interact with each other. So that brings me to my next point that a lot of uh, mistake that a lot of artists make is they paint things. So that is why when somebody looks at a still life or a landscape or you know whatever it may be, it may not capture you the viewer's interest because it's just a painting of a thing. You paint a picture of an apple and it's just an apple and there's nothing special about it, has no great composition, uh, the values are off, or um, there is uh, no interesting contrast, there's nothing to draw the viewer's attention, there's no interest there. So not having uh, interest within your painting is a huge mistake. And uh, that a lot of li landscape artists will fall into this uh, trap because the basic rules of the landscape is you need to have a background, a middle ground, and a foreground. And a lot of times one of those areas is lacking interest. And then you notice, the viewer notices something is off about the painting. Perhaps you don't have any interest in your foreground. Maybe it's just a plain field and there's, it's taking up way too much of the painting. Uh, you're not showing anything to capture the viewer's interest uh, or attention to that painting. So, painting an interesting subject matter is also key to having a successful painting. And again, this all ties in with everything else. You know, it ties in with getting your drawing correct. It ties in with getting your values correct. It ties in with making sure your composition is good. Which brings me to the last thing that I believe, uh, last mistake that a lot of artists make when they're painting, is they don't put in a focal point. So there's got to be something within that painting that draws the viewer's attention initially right from the start. And I'm not talking about, uh, I'm not talking about like they just look at the painting and it's filled with a lot of interesting things. I'm talking about there's got to be a reason why when somebody walks into a room or a gallery and your paintings hanging up on the wall, when they're looking at all of the paintings all at once against the wall, there's got to be something that draws their attention to your painting in particular. And that's going to be the focal point. And the focal point can be, it's usually going to be a uh, spot of 
contrasting light. And it can be as small as a dime, or smaller than that even, or it can be a larger area. But nine times out of ten, it's going to be um, that small area of light that, sh that draws the viewer's attention immediately from across the room and it makes them want to look at your painting. And once you get them into looking at your painting, then they're going to see everything else. They're going to see that your drawing was correct and they're going to see that your values are correct and everything looks right and there's more interest other than just the focal point to keep the viewer interested into your painting. So they're always, you know, they want to look at it for a much longer period of time than, you know, a couple seconds. So focal point is key. So again, those are the main um, mistakes that I believe a lot of painters make. And I see them, again, I see them with just, not just beginners, um, but a lot of intermediate and advanced artists fall into these traps where they f do not put in, um, you know, a focal point or an area of interest or their value isn't correct. It just happens. We all do it as artists. And a lot of times, you know, that's why they say you should uh, take a break from your painting. Don't, you know, you know get, grab a cup of coffee, uh, get away from it for about, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, and then come back to it, take a look at it. Um, another trick that a lot of artists do is they'll use a mirror. They'll look at the reverse of the painting through a mirror and because and, now they're seeing it differently and you can catch a lot of these things that I mentioned right off the bat and get and fix them. Uh, you can always fix them. Your, your painting is never um, stuck. So again those are the things that I believe are uh, uh, mistakes that artists make when they're painting and hopefully you don't fall into any of these categories and if you do it's no big deal. You can always go back and fix them, or you can get a hold of me. We can discuss your paintings and go over your techniques, and I can help you through any of these problem areas that you might have, and together we'll make sure you have a masterful piece of fine art. So I hope you like this video, and if you do, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you uh, haven't subscribed, please do, and I know everybody's going through a, uh, a tough time right now with uh, what's going on in the world today so I want you to make sure you stay safe stay healthy um, don't let anything happen you know that would be a terrible thing and I don't want that to happen to anybody and uh, you know if you're stuck in, indoors uh, just paint and paint whatever it is you think is going to make you feel better so until then I'll catch you on the next one